Praise God. We welcome each of you that might be watching online or those that are in-house with us tonight. We bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight we're sharing with you a little bit about how God provides at Christmas time. Amen. And uh, I know a lot of people go through different experiences of life. Some need some type of provision and others need other types of provision. But uh, when we call upon God, He is the one who provides. And uh, we'll share some Old Testament revelations on this as well as New Testament Christmas uh, story revelations in regards to uh, provision. But you know, for each of us, we need to learn God's ways. Sometimes we're more interested in the wonders of God than the ways of God. But if we don't understand the ways of God, we'll never learn to walk in relationship with Him. Amen. So we need to learn to walk in relationship. And uh, relationship is more important than results. Uh, we want relationship, fellowship, communion with the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So uh, tonight we're talking about uh, how God provides at Christmas time. We need to learn that He is our source. It's oftentimes people think it's their job or it's their, you know, the, the, the money they have in the bank or this or that is their source. No, God is our source. Absolutely. And we need to call upon uh, the Lord and, uh, and go to the source. Praise God. So tonight I'm going to ask Curtis here if he would begin by reading Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. Here in the Christmas story, you'll find that Jesus wasn't uh, born in the nicest hospital or in the Holiday Inn. <laughs> no. He was born in a, laid in a manger, born in a, a, a basically in a stable and laid in a manger. So Amen. Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. Amen. Praise God. Follow along with us from home, if you will. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census took, first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. So she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in a swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, uh, because there was no room for them in the inn. Well, God has an interesting way to provide shelter. At least he wasn't born and uh, put, you know, somewhere out in the middle of a field somewhere. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a feeding trough. Right? Yes. That's, that's what a manger is. Yes. Yeah. And, and we know that God provides shelter and he's promised to meet all of our needs. And so, uh, in this case, there was shelter. Yep. And God uh, was in the business of providing shelter for his only son. But he had a reason for that, because there was going to be a group of people that were going to go around uh, sharing all about this uh, marvelous story. And right. so we'll get into that in a few minutes. Praise God. Now, the word uh, provision actually comes from the root the Lord will provide, or we sang earlier in the chorus, Jehovah Jireh, which is, uh, means the Lord will provide. And you find that in Genesis chapter 22, verse 14. And uh, this is a, a lengthy story, so we're not going to read the whole passage. But uh, uh, Abraham was asked to, to go and to make a sacrifice by God. And uh, he asked him to sacrifice his only son, uh, Isaac. And uh, the interesting thing was that uh, Isaac noticed what was going on. He said, oh, here's the wood, and here's the fire, and here's this, and here's that. But uh, where's the sacrifice? Yeah, right. <laughs> and Abraham said, the Lord will provide. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Wise answer. 
That's so, right. so we'll come to the, the key verse that's happened on the top of the mountain. And this is in Genesis twenty two fourteen. Yeah. Amen. So, and Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Amen. 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 So, uh, the original, let me see. Yes. And you see in the old King James, he used the actual Hebrew word, Jehovah Jireh. That's right. So, the Lord, our provider. And in the mountain of the Lord. You know, the interesting thing is you could do a cross-reference between Genesis 22, 14 and Hebrews 12 and 22. And you would find something very interesting, that we have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. That's right. We, have a, we have a heavenly mountain. You're right. So there is provision available for us when we come to the Lord and we ask Him. That's right. And uh, He's promised to meet our needs. Yeah, and notice that's present tense, you have come. Yes. So this starts today, folks. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yep. So uh, the Lord, our provider. So we see that in the Old Testament. And, uh, and we also see it in the New Testament. Let's also look at Isaiah 26, 1 to 4. Isaiah 26. In Isaiah 26, Isaiah is prophesying uh, the future uh, and what will happen in the city of God. Isaiah 26, 1 to 4. Isaiah 26, 1 to 4. Read along with us. There it is. Isaiah 26, 1 to 4 says, In that day this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. Now Amen. there's an encouraging word for you. Amen. Now in the old King James, we often have sung this scripture course. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength, everlasting strength. So this uh, course goes on and on and explains the fact that in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. We read back in Genesis 22, 14 that he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide, and he has everlasting strength. He's never too weak to provide. Amen. He's always got the strength to provide. He does. He's always strong enough. Amen. Amen. He's always strong enough for your needs. He's always up for the task. Amen. That's right. You Praise can never God. call God on an off day. Yeah. So no matter what you're going through at this Christmas time, you know, it's it's good to read the Old uh, Testament uh, and see where some of this came from and, and understand what happened on that first Christmas morning when Jesus was born and laid in a manger. But in our particular situations and circumstances right now, when we're going through difficulties with the pandemic and so on, we need to know that God is able. God is able to sustain us. He has the power. He has everlasting strength, able to sustain you, able to sustain your family. He's able to provide. He's able to meet your needs. And if you don't have the, uh, the provision that you need at the moment, He will give you the uh, ability to find it, you know, give us the wisdom, Lord, where to go and what to do, what the knowledge, what to do in the situation. Yeah, he'll provide all that. And he'll give you the solution. He will. Yeah, you can ask God for help at work. You know, I pray to the Lord while I'm at work. Right. And no one knows I'm doing it, but the Lord does, and He right. gives me direction. Right. He always answers our prayers, whether they be little prayers or big prayers. Yeah. Nothing is too big or too small for God. He will always provide. A lot of people have vision. They want to do this and they want to do that. I want to, you know, do this big builder thing, big build, build bigger barns or bigger buildings or bigger uh, places and uh, do different things. But they they have vision to do things, but they don't really pray into the provision to do what is the vision. Right, and then they, what they need is a vision to for the next step. Right. So get a plan in place, and then God, what is the next step? Right, right. And he'll do the next step with you, because sometimes we get hung up on the big thing, and we don't know how to get there, and it's like this big mountain, 
But we're not seeing the first step yeah. to the mountain right there. So it's not the vision we need, it's the provision we need. Yeah. The provision comes from the Lord Jehovah. Amen. Amen. Praise God in the name of Jesus. So we're going to go back to Luke chapter 2. And we're going to read more of the Christmas story here, verses 8 to 20. And uh, in this passage, we find that God not only provides shelter, but God provides fellowship. Because you can imagine, here's Mary and Joseph and this baby, and they're laying him in a manger in a stable someplace, and they're wondering, here we are, we're, we're supposed to have the Messiah, and uh, the angel told us to call him Jesus, and who knows about this? Yeah. But God made an announcement. Yeah, God did the public announcement. Amen. He, he has his own PA. Thank Amen. you very much. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're going to go to Luke 2, 8 to 20. Amen. Okay, so 8 to 20, here we go. And back in Luke 2. So now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Uh, and keep in mind, there's no city lights back then. No, it's that's pitch black. That's right, and they're doing the night shift. They're doing the night shift, and the only light that possibly might be a starlight or moonlight. There's there's no new market lights back then, okay? That's right. So there's no Christmas lights, no nothing. So imagine what happens in the next verse now. Yeah. Verse 9, And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Yes. Because they're, they're not supposed to see that kind of a bright daylight yeah. in the middle of the night. So then here it goes, verse 10, And the angel of the Lord, the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings, uh, uh, good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. We need more good news, don't we? Amen. There's too much bad news on yeah. TV. Good news. We need the good news. <laughs> You've come here tonight to hear the good news. <laughs> right on. <Come> on. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, which will be to all people. So you're Amen. included. Right. Okay. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, laying, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, um, one of the shepherds said to another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. It's interesting, they took the initiative there. Absolutely. They didn't, they didn't, no one told them to go, they right. just decided they're going to go. Absolutely. Right? Just like church on the go. <laughs> <laughs> These shepherds were on the go. Amen. Um, and they came with haste. Right. So no wasting time. And they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Just like it was said. Right. Verse 17. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. Uh, and all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Uh, so these shepherds were like natural evangelists. Absolutely. They're going around doing this work. Right. And they're just... They just have this initiative. That's what God wanted them to do. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. No ordinary night shift. No, no, that's right. And, and here's a situation, you know, where you can imagine Mary and Joseph in, the main, uh, in this uh, stable and the baby lying in the manger. And, uh, and you know... It's kind of a, a, they're happy, excited, but at the same time, it's lonely. Either, yeah, you know? lonely and a little bit confusing, perhaps. Yeah. And, what and, do we do now? And, and God says, let's take care of the fellowship that they need. Uh, we need to, you know, uh, proclaim that Jesus is Lord. So he sends the angels first, and the angels tell the shepherds, and then the shepherds go and tell everybody else. Yeah, and the shepherds show up, and Joseph and Mary probably weren't expecting them. <clears throat> Yeah. But they uh, were probably delighted to see them. Absolutely. To see some fellowship and wow, this is really a thing. This is happening. You so, know, to confirm that what they had was of God. So in this story so far, we've seen that God has provided not only shelter for them to have the child, but also He has provided fellowship. Yes, Amen. And the promotion that needed to happen 
uh, at the time of the birth of Jesus. And I find it interesting, just to throw this extra point in here, mm -hmm. Jesus would go on to say in John 10, I'm the great shepherd. Yes. So who does he first tell? He sends angels to tell shepherds. Yeah. Because they are men after his own heart right. to tend the sheep. Now, if you are lonely this uh, Christmas season, then start to pray and say, Lord, I, I need uh, emotional support. I need uh, fellowship. Amen. From, you know, and send the right person or persons to encourage me yes. uh, during this time. And if you feel lonely, uh, because Christmas can be a lonely time for some people. So we want, to, especially this year, right? <laughs> yes. Because everybody's uh, supposed to be the social distancing and yep. all this business. So... So we encourage you to pray and ask the Lord not only to provide the shelter, if you need shelter, or provide uh, the fellowship uh, and then the emotional support that you need. God is also in the business of providing supply. Supply and resources. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. And this is the... Christmas story from Matthew's perspective and uh, in Matthew 2 1 to 12 we see that the angels and uh, thank you uh, sister for uh, suggesting the uh, Noel first Noel because we sang about the, the wise men coming that's right traveled. yeah they were, that's <laughs> in that song amen <laughs> amen yeah so praise God so uh, Matthew 2 1 to 12 okay here we go Matthew 2, 1 through 12, read along with us. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Now, there must be some time that's been passing here, right? Uh, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Guess who didn't get the memo about this? <laughs> the, the higher ups in Jerusalem didn't right. have a clue. <laughs> they didn't get the memo. They were out to lunch. They were out to lunch. <laughs> Praise God. But the, these, these foreigners from a, a separate country, yeah. they knew about it. The shepherds knew about it. Yeah. These guys didn't. Yeah. So when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. And when they had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. Right. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who sh will shepherd my people Israel. Well, there's that word shepherding. Right. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And... He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Tricky stuff here. Yeah. He's playing a trick. Verse 9, And when he, they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. At this point he's a young child, he's grown up a little bit. He's not a young baby, he's a young child. Yeah. Uh, worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Yes, amen. So here in this situation, God provided direction by using the star. Yeah. Okay. And uh, interestingly, if you go on the internet right now, that uh, there's lots of uh, stories about how the Christmas star is going to appear again this year. Yeah, I've heard. So about that. that this is a very important thing. Right around the 21st, I think, of, of uh, December. They're expecting it to appear again, and it hasn't appeared for over 800 years. The last people that saw it were in, in uh, the 1200s. Wow. So uh, <laughs> so it's going to appear again this year. So uh, that's, that's interesting information, and uh, I've been posting up a few articles about it myself on Facebook. So, um, so that's one thing. The second thing is that these gifts that they gave, 
Now, we know from the songs that we sing, and even if you sing We Three Kings from Orient Are, uh, you, you, you sing about three kings. Now, uh, really, we know there are three gifts, and so we assume that there are three kings, but there could have been 50 kings. We don't know how many kings actually were there, yep. but there were three gifts. Yes, for sure. And uh, I was listening to a fellow the other day who was talking about, uh, he hadn't done it himself, but his, a, a colleague of his had actually done uh, a little bit of an analysis of how, what kind of value this gold, frankincense and myrrh would have been, and he said it was worth a fortune. Yeah. A fortune. So, you know, God was in a few verses down in this chapter, God's going to call them to go to Egypt. He's going to pay for the trip. Yeah, he's paying for the trip. He's, he's paying providing. for the trip. Yeah. Now, we know that the, the three elements here, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, all describe Christ's life. Yes. The gold represents his divinity. And the frankincense, of course, uh, represents uh, worship, you know, the incense, and the myrrh, of course, is the suffering servant. Yeah, like the embalming. Yeah, the embalming fluid. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so all of this is here. So God is providing the resources and the provision that is going to be needed to pay for this trip to Egypt. That's right. Yeah, man. You know, precious resources that don't come by easily. And that God just gives them a ton of it. And at the same time, he, he is prophetically declaring through these gifts the nature of Christ and what his life would be like. Amen. There's prophetic types and shadows yes. in these gifts. Yes. Amen. Was there anything else there that you wanted to? Uh, I think you covered it pretty good there. Yes, uh, I was just going to say that uh, God still speaks in dreams and visions. Right. God can provide direction with not just stars, yes. but also with dreams. Right. And then, if you're not sure, compare it against the Word of God. Right. Amen. Right. Well, even in the in, in the case of verse uh, 12, they were warned in a dream not to go back to exactly Herod. Right. And uh, and through that dream, they were told to go back to their country and other way. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, and Herod was in league with the devil. Right. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, yeah. seriously, he was. We're going to go to Philippians 4.19, do a cross-reference here about uh, supply, provision and supply. Philippians 4.19. So Philippians 4 and 19 says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Well that's a that's a pretty big <laughs> it's only three letters but it's pretty big. It's all. Yeah. He, he's promised to supply. Yeah. So God is never late, he's always on time. Absolutely. And if you need a supply of provision, whatever type of provision that happens to me, we've been talking about direction and fellowship and and uh, uh, also um, shelter. Uh, you know, whatever the provision is. Now, uh, if it needs, if you need provision for uh, supply for paying bills, yep, God can supply those too. That's right. He can send a gift. He can, you know, some usually we have to work for it, but then also he can supply gifts. Too. Yeah, divinely. Yep. Yeah. yeah, divinely supply that. So God is able to do that. Now, uh, in this in this passage here, he says, "My God shall supply." It's not, uh, you know, he might. Uh, yeah, think about it. <laughs> yeah, this is a certainty. This is a certainty yeah. for the Christian yeah. who fixes their mind and eyes on Jesus. Yeah. It's a certainty. Now we've talked about many times over the years, and there's a number of posters around the place here that you can see where we have the cross and the four aspects of wealth because a lot of people are just looking at the money right but in actuality um, wealth has four different uh, aspects to it first of all the top one is spiritual wealth yeah it's like the top of the cross there yeah it's it's the spiritual wealth is what we get from God right and then if you use the far arm of the cross uh, we have 
character wealth, wealth of the soul. You know, right. God wants this to, to give us strength and, and build yeah, up it our says a good ability. name is better than wealth, better than yeah. natural riches. Yeah, a absolutely. good name is valuable yes. in the Bible. And if you use the opposite arm of the cross, uh, he wants to give us health and uh, healing wealth. You know, he wants to heal our bodies. He wants us to be in good health. He wants us to have good strength mentally and physically. Amen. And, uh, and spiritually, of course, too. And finally, the bottom of the cross is natural wealth. Natural wealth. So there's actually four different uh, dimensions of wealth that, uh, that God wants to supply to each of us. Have any and that, no, that's, that's right. That's a balance. So when people they automatically gravitate towards the financial aspect or the natural aspect, that's only 25% of the discussion. Right. God talks first about riches in heaven, right. riches in glory. Right. So let's start with that first. God provides them up from the top down. So we've called that 4D wealth. You'll see there's a couple of posters around. Uh, the, yeah, they're the, on the website and on Praise Church God. on the Go's Facebook page. Praise well. God. Yeah. Amen. So uh, fourthly, we want to talk about the fact that God provides direction. Now, we've already kind of referred to that with the wise men. He provided the star and he provided a dream. But in the case of... Uh, Mary and Joseph, we're going to go back to Matthew 2 here again, Curtis, verses 13 to 15. And this is when uh, Joseph gets the dream that he's supposed to go to Egypt. All right. So, so Matthew 2, 13 to 15. Yes, amen. God provides a dream and direction. Yes, amen. And as you said, that he's already got the, the paid for the trip. Yes, God's already amen. Paid for the trip. So here it is. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, this is the other Joseph the dreamer, by the way. Yes, There's one in the Old Testament Genesis, yeah. and now we got the other Joseph the dreamer. <laughs> Praise God. Here we go. Amen. So, uh, when, they, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. And what is there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord out of the prophet, through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Amen. Amen. So Jesus actually fulfills the little prophetic uh, word that out of Egypt he would be called forth uh, as his son. But there's also the fact that the nation of Israel was also called out of Egypt. Absolutely. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Let my people the go. slaves. Yeah. Yeah, let my people go. That's, yes. that's totally the sons of God coming out Amen. of Egypt. Amen. Amen. So it's so, a double fulfillment. So Jesus is the Passover lamb. Amen. Amen. But in, in the end, too, like when we're called to the Lord, when the yes. Lord calls our name, yeah. we're being called out of the world. We're being called out of Egypt spiritually. Yes. So it's, it's also fulfilled in the body of Christ. Now, do you know that God whistles? You know, you've heard the saying, whistle while you work. Yeah. Well, God whistles. And when he whistles, people respond. Amen. We're going to go to uh, Isaiah chapter 5, talking about uh, getting direction from the Lord. And uh, in Isaiah chapter 5, and we're reading from uh, verses 26 to 30, I believe. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 26 to 30. Now he's talking about Christ here uh, when he says that he will lift up a banner to the nations. So let's, okay. um, verses 26. Yeah, so Isaiah chapter 5, verses yeah. 26 to 30, yeah. read along with us, whether you're watching from home or yeah. in-house. It says here, He will lift up a banner to the nations from afar. So you can read it from afar. Yeah. Right? And he will whistle to them from the ends of the earth. That's a loud whistle. Surely they will come with speed swiftly. Now, the, the old King James says he'll hiss, but uh, the new King James says he'll whistle. He'll whistle, yeah. I'll go with the whistle. He'll go with the whistle, that's right. Now, that's an interesting translation, Mr. Old King James. Okay. He will whistle to them from the ends of the earth. Surely they will come with speed swiftly. Amen. No one will be weary or stumble among them. No one will slumber or sleep. Nor will the belt on their loins be loosed. Right. Nor the strap on their of their sandals be broken. Yeah. Whose arrows are sharp, and all their bows are bent. Their horses' hooves will seem like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. The, their roaring will be like a lion 
They will roar like young lions. Yes, they will roar and lay hold of the prey. They will carry it away safely, and no one will deliver. In that day, they will roar against them like the roaring of the sea, and if one looks to the land, behold, darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened by the clouds. So, in this case, uh, God is calling, you know, those who have been dispersed, and he's whistling. And, you know, those of us that have an ear to hear, what did Jesus often say? And what does it say in the book of Revelation? He who has an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit says. What the, the Spirit, Spirit says. says. Yeah. So we can hear that whistle. Yeah. All right? It's a we hear the sound. sound of the Spirit. Yeah. I mean, for myself, I might be sound asleep at night, and suddenly I wake up and I hear a song. You know, and the, and the song, and suddenly I... I want to start singing in bed, you know, I'm laying in bed, and I want to start singing, because I get that song, I hear the song, you know, and, and, and when the Lord whistles, we hear, and we respond to it, and when he's talking about the, the lions, of course, we know he's the lion of Judah, right? Yes. And he is the captain of the hosts. Yes. Amen. Yeah, and by the way, that word hosts means armies. Yes. It doesn't mean a choir group. Amen. It no, means host right. means armies. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're familiar of Jesus as the as the uh, uh, Lion of Judah, or sorry, as the, the suffering Lamb, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, but we're not really familiar so much with Jesus as the Lion of Judah. That's right. He's that both. break every chain. Yeah, yeah. He, became, he came as a Lamb so he yeah. could rule as a Lion. Right. right. Amen. It's both. Amen. So God provides... Uh, a direction, whether it's by dreams or by whistling. Right. Amen. He will Amen. call us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The sound of heaven. Amen. God provides revelation in the Christmas story. We're going to go to Luke chapter 2, verses 21 to 40. A little lengthier passage, but this is the story of the two prophets, Simeon and Anna. <laughs> so and uh, they come out and... Uh, uh, right when Jesus is brought into the uh, temple. In Luke chapter 2, verses 21 to 40. Amen. Well, read along with us. If you have a Bible open or you can watch it on the screen, uh, it just helps when there's a longer passage. Just, just mention again that we're talking about a provision of God at Christmas time. And in this case, God is providing revelation. Yes, He is. Amen. Amen. And Amen. it's in the mouth of two witnesses, brother. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> A male voice and a female voice. Yeah. Praise God. So here we go. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus. Jehovah is salvation. Right on. By the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now, when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, yet every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. What a promise. Amen. Wow. So he had so he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the par parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people, Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at the things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, the sword will pierce through your own soul also, and the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Okay, so that's the one prophet. Now the yes. prophetess comes in. 
uh, this is amazing because this is happening one after the other, right, in the temple. All orchestrated by God. Verse 36, Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. So an Israelite, not a Jew. Right. Okay? Asherites are not Jews. No. They're not from the tribe of Judah. No. She was of a great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And coming in at that instant, instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him, that's Jesus, to all those who looked to redemption, looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Amen. So in both situations, the Lord brought prophetic words by both a man and a woman upon Jesus. And, uh, in, and in the case of uh, Anna, she must have been close to 100 years old because she'd been a widow for 84 years. So, uh, so <laughs> she, was, she was getting pretty close to 100 there, but I would say. But at uh, any rate, um, the interesting thing is that uh, Simeon, he had a, a very powerful word about uh, salvation. Uh, especially in verse 30, he says, For my eyes have seen your salvation. So Jesus is Jehovah is salvation, right? Yep. Amen. Amen. He, is he says, My eyes have seen your salvation. And the name Jesus means Jehovah is salvation. That's right. Uh, and he goes on to say, Which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. So, God only used Israel to go through Israel to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. Amen. Right. Yep. And uh, Jesus had to be born through a people. So he chose them and he came through them to bring the gospel to all of us here Amen. even tonight. Praise God. Amen. Did you have anything Yeah, no, this mind? is good uh, you know, because in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established. These two prophetic people come in. They're both of great age. Right. And Simeon, we, I can pretty much sure, I'm pretty sure God called him home after that. Right, right. So what a special moment this was right. for him to see and declare Jesus is our salvation. Right. And it's for us. This passage is about us, folks. It's right. for us, the Gentiles. Right. It's not just for the Israelites. Right. Amen. So uh, our time is starting to run away on us. Let me just give you a quick review, and then we're going to read one more passage before we conclude. So, uh, we've been talking about how God provides at the Christmas time, and in the Christmas story, God provided shelter for Joseph and Mary, uh, for Mary to bring forth Jesus. God provided fellowship through the angels, declaring to the shepherds, and bringing the shepherds uh, to see the baby Jesus, Amen. and then out to announce him to the world. That's right. God provided supply and resources through the uh, wise men and the three gifts that they brought, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Amen. Amen. God provides direction through dreams. And he also used the star in the case of the wise men yeah, as well. Yep, yep, that's right. Praise God. And we also looked at the, uh, the call of God in Isaiah with uh, as a cross-reference there that he was whistling and the people were responding. Amen. We need to hear the voice of the Spirit. Right? That's right. From the nations. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God provides revelation as we just uh, uh, shared with you uh, through Simeon and Anna. We've talked previously also about how God... Uh, uh, initiated the whole aspect of provision through jo Jehovah Jireh and the story of, of Abraham in Genesis 22. I want to conclude with a passage in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Curtis. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 6, verses 33 and 34. And this is the law of addition. God wants to add to your life tonight. Now, do you know how God wants to add to your life? There's something you need to do to respond to the Lord so that he can provide and add to you uh, more things in God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verses 33 and 34. Okay, let's read it together. But seek first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Amen. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God. Who's the king of the kingdom? It's Jesus. Amen. So we're to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Christ's righteousness becomes our righteousness. Yes. Right? He trades it. Amen. Yep. We, we become the righteousness of God in, in Christ. Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yep. We trade away our filthy rags so, and gain his righteousness. So if we want to participate in the law of addition when it comes to God's economy, Amen. He wants to add to our lives. Then we need to seek first His kingdom and uh, His righteousness and all the other things shall be added to you. Then He goes on and He tells us, don't worry about tomorrow. In other words, just learn to rest in God. Ask the Lord to give you rest, right? Amen. Amen. And put your hope in Him for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own Problem. <laughs> That's right. We got enough to think about today. Amen. Don't worry about tomorrow. Praise God. Put tomorrow in God's hands. Amen. So Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider, we thank the Lord tonight that He is here to meet all of your needs, and uh, we're going to conclude by praying tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that the Scripture tells us in Philippians 4:19 that my God shall supply all my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you want to add to us, not subtract from us. And you've encouraged us to, in this passage in Matthew 6, 33 and 34, to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these other things shall be added to us. Yes. So, Lord, I pray, O oh God, that, that tonight each one that's either watching uh, online or here in house, Father, that we will be encouraged by the Spirit of God to know that God is able to meet our needs and that God is for us and that God wants to provide for us whatever the need is during this Christmas season. We've been talking about the four dimensions of wealth. Lord, that you're here to meet all of our needs, whether it's uh, character development, whether it's spiritual supply, whether it's uh, health and healing, <laughs> or natural uh, wealth. Lord, you're here to supply whatever the need is. And nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible to those who believe. So we thank you, Lord, that we can put our trust and our confidence in you because you are our source. And we come back to the source Lord, it's not about the vision of what we want to do, but it's about the provision that's available through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, I just want to thank you for the people that are watching both online and in-house that are participating in either way. Father, I thank you, Lord. Bless their hearing. So hear the word of God. Let it go down and minister to them in their soul yes, and their heart, Father. I thank you, Lord, that if anything is of God, if any vision is of God, God will provide for it. Amen. But, but Lord, it, it's not enough for us to just see things and then dream about them. Yeah. Lord, you will provide yes. the first step. Amen. And then, Lord, then uh, we just take the first step. Yes. And then after that, we take the next step. Yes. And we are faithful day by day, not worrying about tomorrow, just focus on Jesus today. Amen. So we thank you, Father, for this Christmas message of provision. Yes, Lord. That God provides for his own. Amen. If we seek you first and seek your kingdom first. And Lord, we seek your righteousness. So we love you, Lord. We bless you and we worship you forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm going to ask Mr. Curtis to go and shut off the equipment. We thank those who are watching. Uh, we're going to invite anyone that would like personal prayer tonight to feel free uh, to come and join us here at the front. We'll be glad to pray with you. There's still coffee at the back if you like coffee. We thank you for being here. Hopefully you can join us on Sunday. God bless you. And we thank you for being here. If you like prayer, we invite you to come.